I think the incidence of concussions is increasing. An aggressive play calling by the Titans. Go- when I played, it, it definitely uh, uh, affected me, but at the same time, uh, you kind of played through it at the time, but really, ultimately, what caused me to uh, to retire. One of the challenges with diagnosis of concussion is that the patient looks normal from the outside. Reggie Bush, Reeves, swings it out to Bush, and the ball is knocked away, and a crunching hit put on by Sheldon Brown, and Bush uh, takes a while to get up. This is a problem. It needs to be taken care of. First down and 10, Kansas State on the quarterback draw. We've all heard the term athletes today are bigger, stronger, faster. Aaron Rodgers, the concussion last week. Concussions have become a serious issue, not only for the National Football League, but for college and youth programs, and it is not just limited to football. An estimated 10 to 19 percent of all athletes participating in contact sports suffer a concussion each season prompting athletes, medical staffs, coaches, and trainers to take notice. Still stopping. Go, go! Oh, oh my go. gosh! Several former professional football players have committed suicide or died after long battles of mental illness, in which repeated concussions caused brain damage, as noted in this report from ESPN. The multiple on-field concussions suffered by former NFL safety Andre Waters led to his depression and his suicide. With a variety of symptoms, It is understandable why some athletes do not know the severity of such a head trauma. On a quick throw, and stamp on T.J. Hushmanzada, David Barrett with the smack, and Hushmanzada is laid out. One research study shows former NFL players had a 37% greater chance of developing Alzheimer's disease than the general public. Frank Wycheck played for 11 seasons, nine of those with the Houston Oilers' Tennessee Titans franchise. Whitecheck says awareness of head trauma increased in the mid-1990s when Super Bowl quarterbacks Troy Aikman and Steve Young were knocked out of games. Whitecheck says it is a concern after he, too, suffered multiple concussions. Yeah, it is a worry. It really is. Deep down inside, when I put my head on a pillow at night, sometimes I think about it and, and, uh, and it's not good. According to the National Institute of Health, a concussion is a short loss of normal brain function in response to a head injury. Dr. Alan Sills, an associate professor of neurological surgery at the Vanderbilt University Medical Center, says experts rely on several methods for diagnosing a concussion. One is what the patient's telling us, what the symptoms are. And so we ask them about things such as headache and feeling foggy and if they have sensitivity to light or noise, weakness, numbness, and tingling, these types of things. The second thing we do is we'll put them through a short battery of tests looking at their attention, their concentration, and memory because we know those are factors that are often affected by concussion. And the third thing is we can do some assessments of some of their neurologic function like their balance and their motor skills because those things are often affected as well. Former Titan Frank Whitecheck says the NFL has made progress examining this issue. At least from the prevention point uh, point of view, I think they're taking the right step as far as keeping some guys out, having the baseline test. There are all the things that uh, are the baby steps in this. Whitecheck adds when a player is hurt, he or she must be honest with the medical personnel. It's up to the player to be truthful with the trainers and the doctors and, and himself and whether he can continue to play. But I think the NFL, there's, there's different reasons uh, why they do what they do. But ultimately, if, uh, if anything, there's more attention paid to it. And there's rules being applied. And at least there's some, some education going on with the injury. Vanderbilt University head athletic trainer Tom Bossing says there has been more attention drawn to this issue from the medical profession. Now that we've learned some of the long-term effects that are out there, people are becoming more sensitive to it and more aware of, hey, I've had this headache for three days, maybe I should tell somebody. That's happening at all levels. One study showed 23 percent of retired NFL players suffered depression and 17 percent had severe memory impairment. Once again, former Titans tight end Frank Wycheck. I think any player who's played a long time can actually tell you that uh, they've had multiple. It's just they were just not uh, diagnosed or reported. Uh, and I think you know, with nowadays, I think more attention is being brought on the, on, the, on the injury and the subject, and there's more sensitivity to it. The media is also drawing more attention to this issue. In this instance, Al Michaels on NBC's Sunday Night Football talks with colleagues Chris Collinsworth and Andrea Kramer about Green Bay quarterback Aaron Rodgers, who sat out a game last year due to a concussion. 
it's the second concussion that he sustained this season. And last week, he didn't slide, went head first, got tackled at the end of the first half in Detroit, has to go through a battery of tests. There's a whole new protocol now in the NFL. Didn't pass. Yeah, Mike McCarthy said that in another era of the concussion syndrome, he probably would have been playing in this one. When Mike McCarthy talked to Rodgers on Tuesday, McCarthy thought he'd be able to play tonight, but Rodgers later developed a headache. Now the headaches continued through Thursday, and he was sent home from the facility both days. He was feeling better on Friday and began lobbing to play, but was ruled out yesterday. Now I talked to Rodgers before the game, and he said he didn't have any symptoms, but he wasn't sure how the lights and the noise might affect him. The bottom line, he still has tests to pass before he'll be cleared to play. For a player like Aaron Rodgers to return to action, the NFL protocol now calls for no symptoms while resting after exercise. The athlete must pass a computer-based neurological test and must be cleared with a team physician along with an independent neurologist. There is also more research, including one study by Keenan Brown, a doctoral student at the University of Alabama. Brown and his colleague Ray Harrison conducted a content analysis of New York Times articles covering the concussion issue from May 2001 until October 2010. Their results show an increase of media coverage of concussions in the NFL. The numbers are staggering about it. I think we found almost a four to five time the amount of articles in 2008 and 2007, and that became a steady trend up until you know, the present time. We wanted to provide ev evidence or at least provide a relationship between the increase in news coverage about the increase in concussions in the NFL and the call to action by the NFL for the need to uh, limit you know, the number of full pad practices like they're doing this year and just taking the precautions to try to decrease the number of concussions in the National Football League. On the ground, what about that hit? A big pop is Alan Irvin got welcomed by Roderick Johnson. Johnson from Oklahoma State. Of course, this is not just a matter for professional athletes. Vanderbilt University head athletic trainer Tom Bossing and Dr. Alan Sills agree that unlike the visible elements of an injury like bruising or swelling with an ankle sprain, concussions are different. With those types of injuries, you have treatment, you have rehab, you have exercises that you can do, you have medicines you can take. You can't do that with a concussion. Someone can have a very severe brain injury and look normal. They walk around, they move, their eyes are moving together, they're speaking. So it does present a bit of a challenge. Experts agree our single best defense is education. Parents, coaches, and medical personnel should all know how to recognize a concussion and have an action plan in place. Still, Vanderbilt's Tom Bossing says, Sometimes it doesn't matter. The right hit at the right time in the right spot, you're going to have a concussion. There's not a whole lot else you can do about it. A scary moment for one of the nation's top players, Cal and Oregon State. This just moments ago. Watch Javid Best. And he comes down hard. You hate to see that. He is injured. Uh, he would eventually be carted off the field. We do not have an update, but certainly scary situation for Javid Best. Fortunately, Best is now playing in the NFL with the Detroit Lions. In order for all to be safe, Dr. Alan Sills says we need proper fitting equipment with athletes using the correct techniques. He cites a need for athletic trainers at all high schools, which Sills says is a key piece to the puzzle in trying to provide optimal care for athletes. By far the best prevention strategy for preventing severe injuries is to make sure that a player who's had a minor brain injury doesn't go back and receive another blow until they fully recover. One of the things we don't want to do is to go from zero to 100 miles an hour immediately. We've got to bring the athlete back in a stepwise fashion. The NFL has made changes, including measures designed for player safety. These include new rules regarding helmet-to-helmet -helmet collisions and changes in kickoffs to reduce high-velocity tackles. Former Titan Frank Whitecheck says he worries about his quality of life 10 to 20 years from now. From uh, paying attention to the sporting world, uh, just when someone gets a concussion, and whether it be in hockey, uh, football, whatever it may be, it's just you worry about it. And any time an injury comes up or something happens to a, a football player that uh, for whatever reason, commit suicide or some that has bouts with depression, and you always hear those bad stories. It, it comes to my mind: is that you know what can I do from now until uh, that point that uh, I can prevent something? Medical experts say the challenge is to keep getting the word out, so parents, coaches, and trainers understand the treatment process to make sure these measures are implemented at all levels of competition. For Tennessee Matters. 
I'm Terry Likes.